Alright, I'm going to make this as short as possible, and I want you to bear with me here and just give this lady a chance and listen to what she has to say, and then I'm going to correct her on her mistake. Well, hello everybody, and it's Laura from the End Times Watchmen. Hi, Laura. And it is so good to be with you guys again. Yeah. And I know it's been a long time since I posted my last video. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been interesting days, uh, challenging days, etc., etc. And I've had so many videos on my heart, but I am finally in front of the camera again. And today I am starting a new series, series which I can only describe as epic and i do not use that word lightly epic. you know I like we it. are indeed living in the days of noah but what i'm no. finding is that i as i try to warn people that people are just not connecting in with just how close we are and the reality is that god showed me something um last year which made me think no, we are definitely here, and I didn't publish a video because nobody wants to put something out there and then be proven wrong. I didn't want to take that chance, but over the past few months, so many things have uh -oh. happened that have just made it clear and I'm clearer and clearer that I was right the first time, wrong. and we are indeed living in the days of Noah. No, no. And you know, just as God gave Noah a seven-day warning before the door to the ark was closed and the waters of the great flood came upon the earth, that same loving God has placed within the scriptures a prophetic seven-year no, warning he designed hasn't. to clearly it's not in the Bible us when the final any, seven-year countdown before the day of the Lord God, will don't. begin. On it. All right, there, just hold on. Hold on to your horses here. All right, so first of all, there is no seven year nothing. All right, no, a seven year tribulation or nothing like that. You got seven year mentioned once in Luke, if I can get to it. All right, right there has nothing at all to do with this idea of a seven year tribulation. And then just, I got to show this verse here. No man knows the day or the hour. No man knows. Not even the angels of heaven know. <laughs> Yet this lady knows. It's unbelievable. And this... I don't believe it. Seven year prophetic warning sign has been in the scriptures for thousands of years. No, it hasn't. Locked up, hidden, no. and meaningless for previous no. generations. No. But in late 2022, nope. the prophetic word was finally fulfilled. No, it wasn't. And the eyes of the blind were finally opened. No, they weren't. And I am praying that your eyes are going to be opened today are to you? A, prof a prophetic word that has been hidden for generations no, but was fulfilled no, last wasn't. year. Nope. Hallelujah. Nope. So, yes, Hollywood. I am telling you that the seven year warning has already be give, been given. There is and no seven year Noah warning. was told, yet seven more days, God is saying to us, yet seven more years. Yet seven more That's years. That's not in the Bible. And then the You could say it three come. more times, it's still not in so the Bible. the countdown clock has already started to No, it hasn't. And at the time that I am recording this video, because six months has gone past, the day of the Lord is truly now less than six and a half years away. That's how close we are. You don't know that. But this prophetic warning sign that I'm going to share with you today is not simply about timings. No, this same prophetic marker also provides keys which will help us to finally identify once and for all many of the key characters in the 21st century who will have significant roles to play during the Great Tribulation and who are already on the earth and visible on the world stage for everybody to see. So, who or what is the beast? Who or what is the false prophet? Same thing as who the beast. Who or what is Pharaoh? And who are what? the prince of Tyre and the Assyrians? This new series will seek no. to address no. all of these questions. 
Most importantly, however, this series will provide hope and confidence to the Bride of Christ and will also provide very clear strategies which Father God has laid out in the scriptures for how to navigate our way through a period of time that Jesus described as great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To the All right, so you're going to quote great tribulation. That's fine, you know. And we certainly are right now in this world of great tribulation. Right there it is, Matthew 24. Well, what's he say in the book of John? These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We are in tribulation right now. I mean, what kind of world do you live in where you're not facing tribulation of any kind? Come on. The tribulation that we're going through right now, it's coming to an end. It's only getting worse. It's not getting better. What are you talking about, lady? To this time, nor ever shall be. <laughs> so this is going to be a great series it's going to be challenging but there's also going to be good positive stuff in it as well so do keep on watching so whether you're somebody who's been doing your own research for quite a while now and you're just comparing Wait, if you're your not doing your own research you're letting somebody else do it for you okay whatever conclusions with other end times watchmen or whether you're new to this game and you're seeking new insights from others to get you up to speed this video and the oh, others in this series will definitely be right up your alley. So please do not go away, and please, please, it, it, please you know, this, help me. To it, please, 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 if you are new and you need to catch up, then let me suggest this for you. In First Timothy, uh, or First, uh, excuse me, First Thessalonians. I'm sorry. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. I mean, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are born of the Spirit of God, that's it. Now, I mean, you don't need anything more for eternal life. You got it. All right, now, be patient. Why? What's your hurry? You're not going to get everything figured out before you die. But you can figure out the things that are on your mind. The things that you're driven to learn. And as you begin to learn and begin to grow, be patient and be cautious. <clears throat> All right? Prove everything. Don't just take anybody's word for anything. Prove all things things and hold fast that which is good don't let nobody trick you i'm telling you man you've been deceived your whole life and now you're born of god and you're gonna continue to listen to deceivers and liars boy there's many probably more people that are claiming to believe in jesus that are deceivers than those who cl who claim to not believe in jesus so you got to forget about everybody and just go straight to the source, which is God. And God is the Word of God. And the Word of God is God. So prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Need to get the word out by liking this video, sharing it with others, posting a comment, and subscribing to this channel. The information in this series is information that every Christian needs in order to help them navigate through the next six to seven years. No, that's not true at all, lady. All you need is the Spirit of God. Alright, I get fired up about this stuff. I don't think anybody understands, but it don't matter. Let's see what, uh, if I can... Uh, 
if I can find a verse here in that's not it that's not here hold on a second it's in the book of John the Holy Ghost something about the comforter and the Holy Ghost and something something but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you we have the Spirit of God in us to guide us for toward all things all things all right so what <laughs> Unfortunately, so many in the body of Christ are still either completely unaware of the prophecies being fulfilled right before their eyes, or they have been told and they are in total denial of where we are on God's prophetic timeline. I'm doing my best to get the information out there, so please help me. It's not a secret. It's not rocket science, man. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. All right, the next thing on the prophetic timeline is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. That's not complicated. It's not. It's simple. There are There is no mysterious verse in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. You don't need a guru to tell you, oh, you got to put this and that together in order to see that what you're seeing on Fox News is the fulfillment of a prophecy. No, that's not it at all. I, look, I was swayed by those guys early on, by Jack Van Empey, by Hal Lindsey, by, uh, you know, John, whatever his name was, the Israel guy. So he's, look, Fox News, CNN, they're not going to be able to say, hey, look, the Bible's being fulfilled. There's nothing in the Bible that's going to take place, and you're going to see it on the news, and you won't know it unless you watch the news. That, that's not reality. All right? Turn off your TV. You don't need it at all. By doing your best to make other people aware. Amen. So, let us now look into the... John Hagee, that's the guy. That's the guy. He tells you to watch Fox News and all these prophecies that have already been fulfilled or will not be fulfilled until the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. There is no... I mean, you want to go to a prophecy being fulfilled right now before your very eyes? If you can't see this, you can't see nothing. So why even bother, really? In Luke chapter 23, and Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. That's the world that we're living in now. Where people are saying, don't get married, don't have children. And if you have an abortion, oh, they're happy. If they're not pregnant, they're happy. If they're, you know, they, whatever. You know, you got the pill and you got the condoms and you got everything else. And happy are they that aren't bearing children. That's the that's the complete opposite of the world that was going on during this time when Jesus spoke those words during that time every girl was as happy as can be when she was pregnant when she was gonna have a child now the world's completely flipped okay you want a prophecy that's being fulfilled right now that's one of them all right it's to the word of God <sighs> okay God to discover exactly where this seven year prophetic warning sign has been hidden for all these centuries. It's not it's not in the Bible anywhere. I'm gonna show you. 
and also to see why we can be absolutely certain without a doubt that this prophecy has already been fulfilled and what wait a second I gotta I gotta hold on to discover exactly where this seven-year prophetic warning sign has been hidden for all these centuries all right she's saying that there's a seven-year prophecy that's hidden it, even though it's not in the Bible, I guarantee it. But she, that's what she's saying. There's a seven-year prophecy that's hidden in the Bible. And also to see why we can be absolutely certain, without a doubt, that this prophecy has already been fulfilled. Wow. Hey, that doesn't make any sense. At all. There's a seven-year prophecy in the Bible that's been hidden. But it's already been fulfilled. Then the prophecy was in vain, wasn't it? Jeez. And that the seven-year countdown before the day of the Lord has already begun. No, no. So, where there are we going to find this prophetic? Yeah, that's a good question. To count down <laughs> sign in Isaiah 23. And wrong. Yay, completely wrong. And this is where the insanity really begins. I mean, you think that stuff was crazy? All right, so here, let me highlight this. And I told you I was going to make this short. All right, so here we got uh, 70 years spoken of. In Isaiah 23, and it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as a harlot, taking a harp. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, and it shall come to pass after the end of seventy years that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn her or turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Okay. This prophecy has already been fulfilled a long time ago. Now, uh, wait a second. I wanted to go to Daniel. Or, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to go to uh, Jeremiah. Oh, I, I had it up earlier, didn't I? I forgot about that. Okay, so let me do it this way. Alright, so this is how I want to do this all right so we're gonna see two two mentions in Jeremiah in 25 and 29 all right and so this is directly related Isaiah 23 and Jeremiah 25 27 to 70 years and the whole then this whole land shall be desolation and astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon king of Babylon king of Babylon. If you understand the prophecy of Daniel and the four beasts, you understand Babylon is the first of the four beasts. And the fourth beast is in the spirit of the first beast. And that's why she's called Mystery Babylon the Great. All right. And in verse 12, and it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. What that means is very simple. That's our that's been fulfilled. And perpetual desolations means without the Spirit of God. All right. That's it. It's not rocket science. All right. And then in Jer Jeremiah 29, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place, not as it was before, but as it is now, that whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. No longer is it for one group of people it's available for whosoever believes all right this is you got to remember this is the old testament this is before the prophecy was fulfilled now let's go to daniel 9 
and connect another dot. This is really so simple, but it doesn't sell books, man, and people ain't going to make movies out of it because it's too easy. All right, and so here, let me highlight that word again. Oops, to make it simple for you all to see. In my opinion, it makes it easier to understand. All right. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Keep in mind, this is before Jesus fulfilled his prophecy. All right. And so the angel came. Here, where are we at here? Yeah, so he, I just want to highlight this, at 70 years, and then the angel comes to Daniel and says, 70 weeks, all right? Now, uh, and the angel says, consider the vision, and here's the vision, all right, 70 weeks are, de are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ he made an end of sins he makes reconciliation for iniquity he finished the transgression. He brings in the everlasting righteousness. He did it all. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, all talking about what Jesus has done for us. And then we go to John. Chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. This is when he gave his life for us. It is finished. He put an end of sins because he gave his body as an offering, a sacrifice for our sins not ours only but for the sins of the whole world he is the sacrifice the the sacrifice of blood and of goats was never good enough jesus has done it all this prophecy of 70 years 70 weeks however you want to call it it's already been fulfilled. All right, Jesus has done it all. All right, the desolations and the abomination of desolations is very simple. It's not having the Spirit of God. That's it. So all those who don't have the Spirit of God in them right now are an abomination to God. You think of 1948 created Israel? That's an abomination to God. That's because it's desolate of the Spirit of God. It's the Jews' religion. It's not our religion. It's the Jews' religion. And they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. And so if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to teach oops, let me go back. Then you're going to say, "Hey, Jesus didn't make an end of sins. He didn't finish the transgression. He didn't make reconciliation for iniquity. He didn't bring in everlasting righteousness. He did not do anything." In fact, you know, these same people will say that this prophecy is about the Antichrist. 
And, you're, and what they're essentially saying is that the Messiah is the Antichrist. Well, you think the Antichrist is going to come and cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease? Jesus Christ has already done it. Now, of course, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to say he hasn't done it. If you're going to say that your Messiah is the Antichrist, you're going to say that the Antichrist is going to come and do what you believe Jesus never did. This stuff shouldn't be taken lightly. Really. You know, first of all, there is no seven year tribulation. It's not in the Bible anywhere. I mean, it's not. Well, what can I say? I can't point to a verse and say, there it is, or there it's not, because it's not there. I can't point to something that's not there. I can only conclude that this must be part of the Jews' religion, because it's not part of the Bible. There is no seven year tribulation anywhere at all. Nowhere. And I just showed you Isaiah 23, Jeremiah 25, 29, Daniel 9. Uh, this has all been fulfilled by the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He did it all. And so you're saying, by saying, hey, Isaiah 23 was fulfilled last week, well, you're, or whatever. You're saying that Jesus Christ didn't do it all. You're saying Jesus Christ did not put an end to sins. He did not bring in an everlasting righteousness. He did not make reconciliation for iniquity. If you're pointing to Isaiah 23, you're pointing to Jeremiah 25, you're pointing to John 9, you're pointing to John 19 and saying, uh-uh, it's not finished. You're calling Jesus a liar. And the sad thing is, people like this, they make a living off of people that don't know their Bible, that don't read their Bible, and don't put their trust in the Bible that they hold in their hands. That's the reality that we're living in. There is no seven year tribulation. Jesus' millennial reign starts in 2030. Hey, does it even matter? Does the truth even matter to these people? Really? All right, it just gets crazier and crazier. All right, it, and on top of everything that she has said in the first six minutes, she's also making it clear to everybody that she does not believe Jesus Christ reigns in her life right now. How can you rightly say that you're saved if Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now? Folks, we're in the millennial reign. The millennial thousand years. It's not really even a millennial reign. It's a thousand year period that was fulfilled or that began when Jesus laid down his life for us. And promise he he's the resurrection and he's promised to return for us so very special unique time period where he has given his life as a sacrifice for the whole world and promised to return for us all right this is a very unique time period and we live and reign with Christ right now right now Jesus Christ reigns forever not for a thousand years we're in a unique time period and when he comes you're gonna know all this stuff was phony baloney there is no I mean, if Jesus comes back today, well, I would like to be there with this gal 
I'd like to be standing right next to her while she's explaining to Jesus why Jesus can't come back yet. Now think about that. If Jesus comes back tonight, I would like her to listen to her explanation for why. Well, you haven't started the rain yet. You can't come back today. I would like to be there for that conversation. I mean, come on. All right, what do you think?